Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to my channel.、Uh, it's Tiffany from Huaya Laser Technology, Luoyang Co Limited. So in today's episode, I am at the newly designed of module pack production line from Huaya Laser. So for this line, their line efficiency can officially reach 14 ppm. So for today's episode, I'm gonna give you another introduction of this line. Without further ado, let's go. So this will be the first workstation automatic loading, which means cell、um, will be automatically transferred on the top of the double speed chain by the robot arm. And then、uh, moving forward. Oh, and also for robot arm.、Uh, whenever there is a robot arm、um, on this workstation,、uh, Huiyao Laser will also provide those kind of safety fence to protect the operator's safety to make sure there's no jeopardize or something happen to our operators. So this is another safety concern. So once the cell on the top of the double speed chain, the first workstation、um, is we will have like QR code scanning gun will automatically、um, taking picture or scan each cell's QR code and transfer the information to the AMI system. Then once the cell enter to、uh, being passed for the QR code scanning. The first workstation. Let me see if I can open this. See, that will be OCV detection workstation. I think here will be better. Okay, because today they are not、um, under production. So, of OCV detection, the cell will enter to this section, and then we have like detection pin to testing for the cell's voltage and inner resistance. So as I mentioned, when you testing for the cell's voltage and inner resistance, there might be some cell that meet not meet for the requirement, which means、um, the cell enter to this rejection zone will have gripper automatically transfer the NG cell to the back of the NG cell buffering place, and then we will have like OK cell、uh, section when the gripper will automatically refill the empty space with good cell. So that's well finished for the first testing and then、um, election of the cell. And then going forward, if the cell meet for the requirement of the voltage and inner resistance, for the next one that will be polarity detection because that's really important before you grouping them into a module. When the OK cell enter this section, we will have like also detection pin to testing each cell's polarity, and also、uh, we will flip or not flip the cell according to the module design. So here will be the polarity detection. Let me oh close this door, and then here. Oh, and then this is will be our PLC. So another common question I got a lot from our clients is: to, Does Huaya Lasers line have like English section or other language section? So the answer is yes. When we export our line to different kind of countries, maybe they don't have like、um, English or they have like their local language. So、um, Huaya Laser will all the this language to their local language to that will be really friendly to our operator to operate this line. Okay. After the cell pass OCB detection and the polarity detection, they will enter to the、um, manually applying glue section. This workstation. So another common asked question is why this workstation cannot be placed by like automation,、um, like robot arm or any other three gantry access mechanism. So the reason is because when our client take like ESS order from client to client, those kind of、um, pad or like a glue. 
on the cell, change their shape, change their material from time to time. So if that's scenario, then manually applying that will be faster operation. Um, and compared to the robot arm, will take time to change all the mechanism. So that's why for this work section, we prefer to use like a manually process. Okay, so after the cell enter applying for the glue, for the next one, um, we'll enter to the end line, end part of this line. We'll have like a second robot arm grab the fourth cell to be automatically transferred on the top of the stacking table. Again, whenever there uh, like a robot arm, we will have like safety fence to protect our operator. Oh, and uh, we are for basically for all our lines exporting to like um, to our clients, we'll use like Kuka robot arm this way. Uh, after the cell is being transferred onto the stacking table, and then for the next one that will be pressing. So uh, the number three robot arm will grab the stacked cells and then place them onto this one, two, three, four pressing table to do the pressing. Basically, the robot like robot arm will grab the module and then place them onto this stacking table, and then the operator will install one steel belt at the bottom, and then. Um, and then press the button, this pressing mechanism automatically press the cell into a module and after that, they will install the top steel belt one more time. So now they are finishing for the module assembly. And there's one more thing of like a cell binding to a module. This is also what they're gonna happen. So after the module is being binding into um, cell is binding into a module, um, so there will be a QR code automatically um, print from the state uh, printer. So with this printer, um, the operator will apply the sticker on the side by the side of this module or by the side of the end plate or steel belt. Now. Um, the system will be able to know like which cell or which module they're working on. Okay, so after the cell grouping into a module, for the next one is the same robot arm will grab the module from the pressing table and then transfer this module back to the second part of the module line. For the first workstation, that will be Terminal Paul Photography Workstation. Let me also open this workstation. So in this workstation, we will have camera over here to taking picture of each terminal pole and then generate coordinates of each terminal pole's coordinates and then data feeding this data to the rest of the workstation. So that will be for the polarity, uh, sorry, that will be for the terminal pole photography as well as like addressing. Okay, for the next one, that will be insulation detection. Um, so for the third commonly asked question we receive from our client is why this insulation detection workstation is required? Well, uh, when you're pressing the module um, in the pressing workstation, sometimes um, maybe the blue film will get wrapped or maybe the blue film will be, uh, get damaged. So we need to make sure there's no other leakage or disconnect or any other issues before they do the laser welding. So that's why we will have this um, insulation detection workstation before laser welding. So for the next one, that will be laser cleaning. 
For laser cleaning, is that mandatory? So I think it's yes. It's because when you transfer the cell to uh, your warehouse, sometimes the operator will, sometimes the operator Terminal, there will be some dust or some um, like fingerprint or sometimes even have some remain electric light. So in order to maintain like um, a stable uh, laser welding result, this laser cleaning is required. So we will use like 200 watts laser to clean the surface of the terminal pole. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning part of this video, this line is officially reached to 14 ppm, which means we upgrade laser welding workstation uh, from one workstation to two workstation. Also, we upgrade the laser welding workstation to three access gantry uh, mechanism to the robot arm. So um, let's get a closer look this way. So this will be the latest design of the laser welding. We will use like robo arm to do the laser welding for one module. We'll do module laser welding at module A and while the module B is preparing. So this will be saved the time. So each module finished with laser welding, they will uh, like transfer to the next workstation one by one. It will save for the prepare time. Okay, so after the module finished laser welding, so the first workstation that will be like um, post welding cleaning. So over here, the operator will use a brush or um, some mop to clean the terminal pole like a welding point. And then after that, the module will enter to the EOL detection workstation, which the modules, overall voltage, overall uh, inner resistance, and overall temperature, and etc. Those testing atoms will be tested under this section. After EOL detection, the module will directly enter to... Oh, I can open it. What directly enter to this section. The robot arm will transfer the module directly to the pack lower case from here to there. So uh, in our like last year's line or in our 12 ppm line for this section is transferred by the crane. But for this line, because this has like high efficiency requests, so we upgrade this as a robot arm transfer. So this will be like pretty fast. Okay, so now will be for the module line introduction. So at this stage, you will finish all the module line introduction. Let's go to for the pack line. So this will be for the pack assembly line. Behind me, those will be for the first workstation that will be cold plate loading. And then we will use this crane to uh, transfer the cold plates at the bottom. And then at the same time, the operator will clean uh, the cold plates with some uh, spray, some alcohol. And then for after cold plate loading, this workstation that will be, we will testing for air tightness of the cold plate that will be first testing. And then here that will be for the second workstation, uh, apply the heat conduction glue. Um, let me see if I can get a closer look here. So this heat conduction glue will be applied by the robot arm, uh, applied at the bottom of the cold plate.
and going forward, this will be another reserved workstation in case in the future our client has another need to assembly uh, any other components of the, of the uh, body pack. So here that will be the robot arm will grab the module to be entered to the pack um, code plate or pack lower case and then when the battery module in the inside of the code plate the code plate will directly transfer by this tray and then to here and then going forward for this part start from here that will be all the components assembly uh, from the pack for example you will be assembly all the wire or um, like any other like components is start from here And also, this will be, um, I think, like a few of the workstation of the whole line require more of the manpower, but only those two workstation require like a lot of manpower. So over here, so this will be their finished battery pack. Okay, this will be, um, they stall rest of the pack components. And going forward, all of those four workstations are kind of, kind of like a manually assembly workstation. So start from there. Uh, when the pack reach to this section, which means they are already being finished um, of their um, kind of like components, is from there. From there, by the end of the pack line, it's kind of like a testing. For example, over here, they will have like EOL detection. They will have like another round of air tightness testing of the whole pack. We will also have So we will have like a, here will be another ear tightness of the battery pack and then here we'll have like a charge and discharge cabinet. So when the pack reach to this section, um, the operator will use the screen to transfer the pack offloading. So here uh, will be the whole pack assembly steps. Once the pack being finished assembly, they will be transferred to this pack buffering zone and then will directly be installed in the container behind me. So this will be their finished BESS battery energy storage system assembly area. So over here, that will be their 20 tons BESS. So here will be our 14 ppm prismatic module pack assembly introduction. Here will be for the module line and this will be for the pack line. So if any of you are interested in Huiya Laser's equipment or you want to know about this battery pack assembly, feel free to reach out to us by this email address and this WhatsApp number. And when you visit us at Luoyang City, we can also take you to visit this factory. So um, thank you for watching this episode. I am Tiffany. See you in next episode.